Yeah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Welcome to another edition of Islamic Action TV brought to you by Islam by Guerrilla Minded Productions. My name is Salma Siniak and alongside me, Mahmoud Solomon, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Brothers and sisters, welcome again to Action TV. Today, we're chopping up the issue of segregation in schools from the Islamic perspective. Is it right or wrong? What are the justifications for it? Is there, are there dangers there? This week we had a ruling from the Court of Appeal in England, of England and Wales against uh, a school in Birmingham called the Al-Hijra School. Uh, if you don't know much about the case, I'll just recite it briefly. Uh, basically, Ofsted brought a case against the school um, saying that their policy of having uh, mixed genders, so um, primary school age boys and girls, but having them segregated so they were in different classes, they, could, they had to use different corridors, they couldn't mix in their playground, that was unlawful. Um, they went to the High Court about that, the High Court agreed with the school and said no that's fine, you, you're entitled to have such a policy, it's not discriminatory. The Ofsted then appealed to the Court of Appeal saying it, it was a contravention of the Equality Act, it is treating um, boys and girls of different genders discriminatorily um, because basically if you're a girl you cannot mix with, with a boy, or, um, whereas a boy of the same sex could and vice versa, so there's discrimination there. So there was a, there was a hearing in the Court of Appeal this week and the Court of Appeal agreed that there was discrimination and of course that it wasn't justifiable and the, the comment that, and they agreed with Ofsted that um, it would hinder the uh, educational, spiritual, moral uh, maturity of and development of particularly girls um, and, um, and there was evidence brought into the case that um, a lot of the is supposedly Islamic materials used by the school were um, very patriarchal and mm -hmm. uh, male-centred in nature. So you saw stuff about if, if, if a woman disobeyed you, you're allowed to beat her, she cannot Ooh, leave the wow. habit on that room. So unfortunately the, the school had a lot of these extremist mm -hmm. materials on it in its library shelves, which uh, were used by Ofsted to show that um, this was uh, discrimination against particularly the girls and it would harm their development and the Court of Appeal agreed. Um, so that leaves an interesting question, what happens next? I mean obviously there's a long tradition in the UK of uh, single sex schools. I went to a single sex school for example, mm -hmm. there was a, 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 girls, a girls school separately. Now that's a different kettle of fish. The case is about segregation, so if you decide to have a mixed school, mixed sex school, yeah. you can't have se you can't have, have a principle of segregation because it right. pro projects a negative mm -hmm. um, uh, image. image of uh, the opposite sex within the framework of that school. So single sex schools are okay for now, mm -hmm. uh, but maybe you'll mention about yeah, what, yeah, the, yeah. what might happen next. Mm -hmm. But um, you know, the, the UK has a long tradition of of of, of um, segregation, in, if you want to put it like that, in terms of, of single-sex schools, uh, and it seems as though Islam is being used as a, a sort of a, a tool to pick again, back once again, yeah. this, um, uh, these, these breaks in tradition. Um, so, what do we think about that? Is it a positive um, thing? Is it a bad thing? I think that, the thing about it is that, I'm, like Malcolm always said here, yeah, I don't believe in segregation, but separation is always, is, I always believe it's prefer, 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 preferable. Se segregation is when you have an unequal power group mm. that are dominating one of a group and determining the narrative for that weaker group. Separation is when two equals decide to, to take a particular stand on an issue. Now, um, once again, as you said, I think on, on one level, I, I don't think it's good to have men, I mean, males and females separated with different corridors, different playgrounds, different... I don't think that that's healthy. But at the same time, I like you, I feel that this could be this is a mission slow creep uh, towards, uh, you know, like um, pushing this, um, uh, what's this, this kind of atheistic concept of, you know, we, don't, we can't tolerate anything that's really, of any religious or spiritual persuasion 
everything's got to be mechanical. So men and women, they're gender neutral. There's no difference between them whatsoever. Let's obliterate that difference and just push them together no matter what the situation occurs. Mm -hmm. so, and I think I'm more uh, worried about the insidious nature behind what's going on with Ofsted. If the, if the, if the uh, High Court initially was on the side, I mean, if the cops were initially on the side of the school and saw that not as a problem, why did they feel the need to bring in, if they're, if they're just against the idea of the girls not developing, the boys not developing, why did, they, why did they push on the religious part of it? Why did they bring in religious material? Uh, why can't they just argue the case, well, it's equal opportunities, we believe here's the evidence to prove, uh, you know, studies have proved, uh, outside of a, in a secular sense, or outside of a religious sense, that it's not good for the child. Why did they have to bring in religious material yeah. to back up uh, their, I, I would consider, fascistic? Uh, concept that we will all need to be the same. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, it's it's an interesting topic, isn't it? Because um, intermingling. I mean, we, we've had, for example, Jeremy Corbyn. Um, he's gone on about um, separate uh, tube carriages for men and women, hasn't he? Yes. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. There's an obvious concern that um, the groping that's going on, the, the, the level of yeah, crossing, sexual, crossing yeah. that's going on yeah, in, yeah. in carriages, it's, it's, yeah. which. You know, perfectly reasonably to me, he's making a proposal that women should be protected from that form of harassment. Yeah, harassment. Because, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. you know, stranger, you want to speak out, you, you're in shock, but it's harassment as bad as anything else. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Um, but on the other hand, um, to, to, to put, to, 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 to suggest that men are, men are so women are inferior from women, in, uh, men in some way, mm -hmm. it, 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 I think is to me a quite a powerful argument, I have to be honest. Mm -hmm. um, because I, I think that, um, you know, for example, if you, if you go on Hajj, yeah. um, men and women sort of intermingle quite Yeah, yeah, free, yeah, the so so-called free mixing. No no. So when, yeah. when you're doing the Tawaf, you know, you get grabbed from behind by people who are just trying to stop themselves from falling over. Exactly, exactly, yeah. So yeah. I, I think I think there's a sense, you know, that people have to be trusted to exercise their judgment. Exactly, yeah. Um, but to enforce um, the, the, these rules, I, I think, can be harmful to development. But it, it's, a, it's a fine balance, as you say. I mean, you know, you're going about Malcolm and stuff, obviously, you know, the resonances here aren't there of sort of um, whites only trains and whites yes, only. Yes, yeah, exactly. Malcolm. Yeah, yeah, this was so, segregation. So what, so segregation, yeah. Are we going back to that then? I mean, mm. I, mean I, I think as well, because this, uh, this report further highlights the fact that. Another report came out this week, touching on what you mentioned about the. Uh, it's a bit of a pun there. Touching what you mentioned about the groping, um, I think seventy percent of most women, when they do these reports and, and they do this research on the, um, the, you know, the gender disparity, most women will say they've been sexually harassed or, or abused, or you know, in some way, um, you know, uh, most women will say that in, in the Western societies have been have been harassed or sexually abused in some way. Uh, whether it's in public or domestically. Mm -hmm. Similarly, we, we've got the, the Harvey Weinstein uh, situation mm -hmm. in America kicking off right now, where this film producer, <coughs> famous film producer, Jewish um, Zionist film producer, has um, you know, he's been allegedly um, raped women, has groped women, has harassed women, has forced women to have sex with him, you know, to give them parts in films. Um, so we can see in Hollywood, um, men and women are mixed freely, but women seem to come off worse in that situation. So on one level, you've got the school saying boys and girls shouldn't mix because it leads to a healthy society. But then when we do have the mixing in society, uh, we leave, we, we're having disparity in terms, of, um, in, the, um, in terms of the movie world, for example, where men and women are freely mixing, but the, gender, but the women seem to be being sexually harassed. And now women are saying they need to have more, more powers. They need, men that, they need more control from men in certain situations, particularly in Hollywood, where they're not going to be sexually harassed, sexually abused. Um, similarly, um, in the workplace now, new figures have shown as well that in the workplace now, sexual harassment now has reached epidemic levels. So now you've got a situation where do you legislate on that now? Are we going to legislate now to sort of like say to uh, you know to men, you now need to stop talking to women a certain way, stop being sexually harassing them, and are we going to legislate? Or are we going to have workshops around that? So I think that. This school situation with the school is the tip of the iceberg in terms of what, how do we set up a, a dynamic between men and women which is healthy, which is Islamic, mm. and which is not crazy to no fee mixing, but at the same time, um, 
you know, like you can't. I don't think you can legislate on men to respect women. You have to. You have to be sensible enough to know this is wrong. No amount of legislation. No amount of legislation um, can legislate you to be a human, a decent human being. You just gotta know it's wrong. I mean, every man knows when they're harassing a woman, and when you when you've gone past the flipping, you've gone Cost past the cost of Now you all know it. Come on, guys. So the point of the matter is, yeah. But how do we work with women? How do we be around women? And how do we, as Muslims? Make a stand against um, the, the this secular system that seems to be attacking Muslims every day, even even in the school. You know how do, uh, so? I think we do need some healthy balance. The Quran actually, I think the Quran and Islam are stipulates that. But I think that we we gotta have a bit of knowledge, a bit of both, because clearly in the West, women are saying that the, he said um, the, this free mixing on the tube, free mixing in public transport, free mixing in the workplace, free mixing um, in Hollywood or the movie industries is not working. Because women are being raped and it's yeah. not helping. But at the same time, you know, we, we um, at the same time, Muslims, uh, Muslims as themselves, we even though they have these free mixing, uh, some of the most the grooming gangs, you know, uh, you know, because they they're against free mixing, but then these grooming gangs develops or levels of it's homosexuality so, so, so develops. Subcultures, so so culture, yeah, of, of, of fetishes. Yeah, and I think I think that's the point I was making. If, if you enforce the idea of separation and and and, and, and Hegemony, mm -hmm. the stratification of gender, then I think that's when the problems occur. And and, and the, you know this point you're making, this make or make or break you argument. Mm -hmm. It would only be a man, I think, who ever said, you know, <laughs> if you don't sleep with me, if you don't do my bidding, you're then, disgusting. Then, I, then then you're finished as, a, yeah. as an actress. Imagine that. So you know, at, you know, does the problem at the end of the day come down to you know male hegemony, male control of of, of, of the workplace, of, well, the, the, of the, schools, the, yeah. of the film industry? I mean, how about, how about, the yeah, problem, then. I hear what you say, but how, I was listening to the radio with this lady, for, I think it's called the Women's Equality Party, and she's for total equality for women across the board, in um, mm -hmm. wage disparities, in every aspect of life, and she was saying that the reality is that um, there has to be a complete rehaul in how men are taught how to engage women from an early age upwards, it has to be completely changed, because at the moment, and, and she goes, the reality is women have to rely on men. That women have to allow men to make the change. They can't do it themselves. Yeah. So she's actually having to admit that they're not equal in that respect because it's about men making the change, not women. But then at the same time, how are you going to... And we're in a situation where women bring up boys. So if these boys, men, us, being brought up with this attitude, what are the mothers doing to curtail it? Why are the women not... In, you know you know what I'm saying to you? Yeah. What, what's going on? But let's put this out. What say you? But let's put this out there. Does does Islam need also kick up the backside in that? I would totally agree with that. Yeah. If, if, I mean, if, if if we're saying men need to engage with women at a, at a high level, then mm -hmm. maybe it needs cases like this to say, you know, you need to be um, putting women in senior posts of whatever yeah, clergy, which teaching, they is, yeah. Um, you need to sort Scholars, that out yeah. in order to redress this imbalance and, to, and stop things like this. But I think it's crazy when you've got men legislating a woman's periods, a woman's menstruations, yeah. the different colours, the force. Imagine you've got grown men sitting down telling a grown woman about her body and it's, and it's unethical for her now to, to, to talk about her body to another woman because it's not seen as ethical. But these yeah. men will sit down and never had a period in their life. They don't know what it's like to be a woman. Talk about like, you know, the different... What, you know, coming from a female body. And yet, they're the ones, you know, like, it's all men. Written by Ali Asghar or this person or this person or that person. Yeah, yeah. So, it's true. I mean, we're, we're not seeing women in positions of power to really respect them. So, that's probably why they're now... I mean, this woman from the uh, Equality, Equal Party for uh, Equal Party Opportunity Party for Women says that the amount of rapes that go unquestioned, she goes, only 6% of rapes ever, ever really come to trial. Most women are sure. bullied... They feel intimidated. They mean the police don't really investigate it properly. They they feel um, powerless. Particularly with Harvey Weinstein. I was watching one actually said that he stripped off naked. He forced. He was forcing himself on her, and she goes. She completely froze because she's never been in a situation where a man. Yeah, he said it was all consensual. He said all oh, this. He, if ever had sex with anybody, it's always been consensual. Oh, you mean like Trump when he said he grabs women by their by their you know what? Yeah, yeah. This is the president of your country. Yeah, your president. Boasted about harassing women and where he grabs the woman by the private parts, mm. and we're talking about. Um, I mean, but you're going to pick up Muslim schools. Exactly. It's all about <laughs> you're the president of the free world. It's rich. Exactly. It's rich. Coming about. from you, yeah, you know. But you pick up this. And once, but why the test case is, is once again? Why? Why do you think the test case is, is Islam? Why is the test case Islam? Yeah. Well, we all know Islam is a soft touch because you know 
it's uh, you know problem people problem speakers standing up for themselves, don't they? There's mm -hmm. no backbone in in their communities to um, you know to say how we are, what we believe, or what we really think. Um, I mean, we let ourselves be coerced by a male-dominated um, hierarchy, whatever, in whatever sphere we're in. And do you think that's because, um, I think the thing is though, once again though, we have to look at it, it's like, look, we're Muslim, but we don't feel that they speak, that that particular school in Bengal speaks for us. No. Because once again, it's, a, it's an asian oriented environment. I think it's because they segregate themselves as Asians, and they look at, the, and they want to act in this minority way, they don't link themselves to me and you as Muslim mm -hmm. and that's why these the secularists he can just jump yeah, on so, them so that's, that's uh, yeah but now they want to be Muslim isn't it yes, when, they, when there's an issue they want to drag me and you in we're all one now isn't it yeah, when at the Asian school yeah yeah when, when, when that school was running in Birmingham it was all Asians in there they didn't care about me and you we were getting the funding and the grants from the government but that's another point about the judgment isn't it because if, if you say segregation is okay then all sorts of segregation okay you can segregate yourself in the community mm -hmm. you know you don't mix with those white people mm -hmm. in the supermarket you don't don't go out there. Is that so, so it's it, it's um, uh, it, so from, if you start that in schools, it, it does I think um, progress to a sort of insular mindset. Well, you've got that in Bradford anyway. Yeah, you've got this. Uh, uh, where's this place? Is you've got this in West, place in West in, in West in um, West in the, in the north of England. You've got all these areas with laws of Pakistani communities, large swathes of Pakistanis, and they don't speak English. They they they've segregated themselves. I'm not saying that, I'm not saying they've done, they've done it willingly. Obviously, they were placing those in, environment, those economic brackets when they first came here to work the factories and do the dirty jobs that the white people didn't want initially. But they've now become their own ecology in a way, their own, you know, cultural uh, hot, uh, what is it, isolation and spots yeah, yeah. where they don't the, engage the, the, the white community or anybody else outside of that. Little level, whatever you want to call yeah, yeah, it. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um. But yeah, it's um, you know there are dangers there. I think of um, of, 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 of this of, of, mm -hmm. of a segregationist policy. Mm -hmm. um, you know when it, when it is cultural, um, and I th and I think there are good things about the judgment that was that was published this week. But like you say, I think we do have to be careful. We do have to you know be vigilant, vigilant about it, you know Islam becoming another whipping boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, um, and um, of. Um, you know, women continue to be abused because you know all segregation is okay, uh, all free mixing is okay. Yeah, um, so. I, I, I totally agree. I think, I think, I think, I think, um, I think the problem with these Muslims, I think extremism on both sides. So Muslims are extreme with this no free mix, no women, no people in, in, engaging, interacting after puberty, and the West is saying, and the, or the, or this country and its views, our so-called policies are no. Men and women have to mix. We talked about now the gender neutral passports. Yeah. So now we're even moving to a, a, a fit in England now that you won't be even required in the future to say if you're male or female. You must be gender neutral. So what's happening is we're moving to a point where um, you won't even be male or female. So how does that stack up with, as you said, about gender only schools? And I did read in the report, uh, today it was the end of the report, Ofsted said that, the, 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 the Ofsted itself, but one of the ministers who was pushing for, who, who supported Ofsted's report, Education ministers were saying that we we actually believe that even single sex schools should be a thing of the past, mm. which would be a big cultural thing. That then it would have nothing to do with Islam. It'd be yes, it would be it would be a you know, long-standing tradition. Long like tradition. Eaton, Harrow, you know. Yeah, what would happen? Yeah, what would happen there? Oh, <laughs> does that go for the for the armed forces as well? Yeah, like those elite right. squads, you know, like like you know, like um, does it go for that as well? Like um, you know, um, SAS. You know, uh, men only. I think there was a case where there was a men only cigar smoking place, wasn't there, somewhere in England? This woman wanted to get in and she was forced to, they had to let her in. I don't know. So these old boys sit down in these like plush leather chairs and smoke big fat cigars and drink cognac and talk about women. And then, my gosh, there's a woman in here! There's actually a woman here! Oh, 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 oh. So it seems like that. So yeah. I just think if it's a balance, I think if there's a balance, I think in Islam, I'm, I, I'm, I don't think the, the so-called free mixing is, is Islamic. I think it's all being tradition, it's made up. As you said, Hajj completely proves that this idea of men and women not free mixing is ridiculous. And it's a Saudi or Arab or whatever, or cultural thing. It's yeah. not Islamic. Absolutely. But then again, there are dangers to uh, yes. unbridled. Yes, unbridled, which I think we talked about with, in terms of the, what's happening in the public transport, what's happening in the workplace, yeah, yeah. Yeah? and what's happening in Hollywood. It's unbridled, it's unfettered. 
you know. And I think it, and it just proves the idea that like in the seventies, people were saying, "Oh, pornography is going to liberate people sexually. Men won't be as, you know, um, you know, sexually depraved if pornography is let um, out there." And all these women were saying, "Yeah, it's a part of feminism, women's rights." Yeah, now we yeah. now we see now the more pornography, the more sexual debauchery, the more the, the, the more decadent and destroyed the society. It's not the less; it's the more of it. It destroyed the society. Right? So I think that even now people are blurring the images of what male and female is. And maybe this is having an effect within yeah, the schools, within the community, within the yeah, food for all. So, so with that, food for thought, plenty to discuss and there'll be more in the future. So stay tuned, continue yes. to subscribe. Please subscribe because we've been getting some good subscribers. There's some excellent, excellent numbers. Of yes, Mr. Cameraman. Yeah, so now, we, yeah. we bid you farewell until the next time. Until the next time, please. Assalamu as alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Assalamu alaikum from Muhammad Solomon. Take care, look after yourself, be good to each other, love each other. Subscribe, please subscribe to Imagine TV. And we'll see you with next time with another power packed documentary or video. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.